Fox News alert. Israel continued to target Hamas hot spots in Gaza, but the ground fighting comes with a heavy toll. The IDF confirming that 10 of the soldiers were killed last night while fighting in northern Gaza. That brings the Israeli soldier death toll now to 12. All right, and right now, foreign nationals have been granted access to leave Gaza. This is great news through the Rafah Gate crossing over in Egypt. That's right. There are about 400 people waiting to get out. Trey Yinks is live in southern Israel with the latest, where it is 12 noon. Trey, uh, good afternoon to you. Yeah, hey guys, good morning. I do want to start with those numbers from the Israeli military. They've confirmed an additional 10 of their soldiers were killed in battles with Hamas inside Gaza. That adds to the two they announced yesterday from a reconnaissance unit that were killed in similar battles. It really gives you a, a sense of what they are facing inside Gaza. In terms of the breakdown, these soldiers, some of them were killed by an RPG that was fired by Hamas militants. Others were killed by an anti-tank guided missile that was fired at an armored vehicle inside the Strip. And so despite the thousands of soldiers that are participating in this ground portion of the operation to destroy Hamas, it, it is a very dangerous battlefield for those soldiers. And the Israelis say they are preparing for more difficult days of battle ahead. I do want to shift to the Jabalia refugee camp in the northern part of the Strip. This was considered a Hamas stronghold in a pl place where the Israelis were facing fierce resistance. They say in a strike yesterday, they killed Ibrahim Bayari, the commander for the entire Jabalia battalion. Uh, this is a man they were, were seeking to kill as part of one of the people that not only participated in the planning for the October 7th massacre, but also that was leading the Hamas fighters in Gaza to kill more Israeli soldiers. I will say there are new questions from the Israeli military, to the Israeli military rather, about the civilian casualties surrounding this camp. Questions about how many civilians were there and how many they knew would be killed as a result of this strike. Additionally, though, you talk about the Rafah crossing between Gaza and Egypt. Some good news today amid this horrific story. Already we are seeing images of ambulances taking injured Palestinians out to go to Egyptian hospitals. And the Egyptians say 500 foreign nationals will be allowed out of Gaza today as part of this deal that was negotiated by Qatar. Guys? So, uh, so who is actually screening them, Trey? Did they get that far? Because the big worry is Hamas gets out. Uh, or the hostages come out with people with Hamas and they end up scurrying throughout the Middle East. Do they have a process of screening? So we understand the list is being reviewed by the Israelis and it's also being reviewed by Egyptian intelligence officials. Okay. It is a great question in all of this because there will certainly be people trying to get out of Gaza from the leadership of, of Hamas. Mm -hmm. But it's important to distinguish between the Hamas leadership that will try to flee likely in the coming days and weeks, and also the civilians that have to get out, including the American citizens. We should note here, though, there are some Americans still in Gaza who will not get out today. I've been talking with one woman, and I just want to play you a few seconds of a voice note she sent me eight minutes ago, and she says this. Jordanian American passport, and his name went through today to leave Gaza with the Jordanian passport, and he's 10 years old without me. Okay, so what that woman there is saying, her son has an American and a Jordanian passport. She has an American passport. She is a, a Palestinian American. She lives in Utah. And she says that the list today included her son's name, a 10 year old, but not her name. And so that just illustrates further the complexities of what's taking place. People aren't going to leave or allow their children to leave without them joining them. And so it's, it's an incredibly challenging situation on the ground. But she is very frustrated uh, about what's taking place. And she says there's been a lack of communication from the State Department about when to go to the border and when she'll actually be able to make it home to the United States. Is, Trey, is there anyone from the State Department on the ground helping navigate this? I know we have a U.S. General's three-star helping with some of the military operation. But from a U.S. interest standpoint, is there anyone from the State Department there ha to navigate it? So there are people in Israel, but not in Gaza. Right. And this is an important note because yesterday you heard the Biden administration sort of touting this idea that they've been talking with aid organizations inside Gaza to get more information about the Americans that are trapped there. The reality on the ground is, is that they have no one inside Gaza. There are American citizens that we've talked to over the past week that say they are running low on food and clean water. And 
many people, including the woman that I just played her, her voice message, she says she's been told by the State Department to go to the Rafa crossing multiple times over the past several weeks. She's gotten there, risked her life to go amid this active war zone, only to be turned around. And so this is a, a critical part of the story. And despite the fact that 500 foreign nationals are likely to leave Gaza today as part of this Qatari and Egyptian deal, it's not all of them. And there will still be American citizens trapped inside Gaza at the end of the day today. And they're Gosh. waiting to go. Tr Trey, we couldn't take some sort of a ship or use, uh, we have ships there. Could we not pick up these Americans that are there in, in the Gaza Strip area using the Mediterranean Sea? That's a really great question, and it's actually being discussed, not only by the U.S. government, but also by some of the private organizations we've been talking to. You might remember back during the war in Ukraine that is still ongoing right now, but the early days of that conflict, you had all of these Americans, often veterans, that would, would go and, and try to rescue people from the war zone. Those conversations are taking place now as the clock ticks on, and people are still trapped inside Gaza. So that is one possibility that's being floated. And there are also European governments, including the French and the Germans, that have talked about using aid ships to, to basically take mm -hmm. injured Palestinians out through the Mediterranean Sea to places like Egypt and get them care that they much need. And it looks like they're just waiting for them to open the gates and away they go. Uh, Trey, thank you very much for the great report from hey, Israel. Hey, Trey, can I just ask you one quick question about the hostages? Is it true the American commanders are on the ground helping locate the 200 plus hostages, many of which are Americans? Uh, the New York Times has that story. Some others are running with it. What do you hear? I want to be really careful with, with this question only because we, we have some agreements with our sources about what's taking place. But I can tell you there is a broad effort on the ground to try and get those hostages, especially the American citizens, out. And if I could just for a moment describe a conversation I just had about an hour ago. My team and I went to an area to interview the family members of, of two people that are being held hostage inside Gaza. And they say they are so worried that the hostages will be forgotten about. And this mother was talking about her son, and you could just see in her eyes the fear that her son will be forgotten. And so it's an important question, and one we should remember. There are still 240 people being held by Hamas inside Gaza. Yeah, the number only seems to grow. Yeah. Trey, thanks.